It's hard to sell mice. That's why you need one with 50,000 DPI. According to marketing anyway. I've always had an issue with the marketing. I just want to know if the mouse is going to work in game and help me play better. But because mice are so subjective and marketing needs to sell to everyone, they're not going to say, ah, oh, I only use this mouse if you got this hand size and this grip style and like to play this way or these games. So in order to sell mice, marketing often focuses on numbers. It used to be the DPI factor, and the fact we do have a 42k DPI mouse on the market now kind of says all you need to know. Who uses 42k? Don't most pros still use 400, 800, 1600? So why even put this on the box? It's a flex. It's trying to market. I get it. For the record, you should be using 1600 or 3200. They seem to be the sweet spots. But that's another video. In this one, I want to talk about another number. 8k polling rate. I've actually seen people asking for this feature, but many of us are sticking with 1000 hertz. So you might ask why? Do players really get an advantage with 8k? Or even 4k? 2k? Or do we just need 1k? So for this debate, I'm going to add my side. If someone wants to respond, great. Otherwise, I think we can probably end it here. So let's talk 8k. One of the obvious problems, if you're using a wireless mouse, it is going to drain the battery faster. So do you want to charge your mouse more often? If you're happy with that, then sure. Next, it's going to put more strain on your CPU. That means more chance of dropping frames or having stutter issues. Which leads us to the next point, compatibility in games. Not all game engines are built for higher polling rates. I can't use them in Quake Live, it's too old. I get really bad stutters. This is what 8K looks like. It's unplayable. But now let's get to the not so obvious things. See the advertised polling rate for smoothness? 8,000 commands per second instead of 1,000. So you think it would be smoother, right? Well, not an exact test, but you tell me. Which one of these is 8,000 hertz? This is filmed at 1,000 frames per second and slowed down even further in editing. It's not exact, but it's an indication. Could you tell which is which? Yeah, me either. It really doesn't matter even when slowed down this much. Also, just because a mouse is capable of 8K, doesn't mean it's going to be implemented properly. My sources found that some mice actually get worse at 8K in this test, due to firmware issues. So if you just go by marketing and think it must be better because the number is higher, you may actually be hindering yourself in a small way. The other thing is, polling rate isn't even about smoothness. It's meant to be about latency. So 1000 Hz is 1 millisecond, 8000 Hz is 0.125 milliseconds. So an eighth of a millisecond. Let me show you the human latency test. The average person gets, what, 180 milliseconds maybe? 200 if you don't have a good monitor? So your human reaction time is going to be maybe 130 milliseconds at its lowest. And you're worried about a fraction of a millisecond difference? So not even a full millisecond? Just a tiny fraction, 1 8th. And that's for all the possible drawbacks you get with 8000 Hz. So return on investment? Is it really worth it? Is it worth draining the battery, putting more load on your CPU, and compatibility issues, or just terrible firmware? Are you absolutely sure that you can feel a difference? Or is it in your head as a placebo? The next argument is that if you get a higher hertz monitor, you can feel the difference more. But that 1000 FPS test I did was with the Asus 540Hz monitor, set to 500Hz. Maybe my camera needs to be 8000 frames per second to show the difference, but I'm not seeing it, even when slowed down. Just to put this into perspective, if you film lightning at 500 frames per second, this is what it looks like. Do you ever see lightning draw across the sky like this? No, it happens too fast. But you think you're sensitive enough and precise enough in a video game to be able to know the difference between 1 millisecond and 0.125 milliseconds? I mean, maybe you're superhuman and better than robots, or just far more sensitive than I am, which is possible. I'm not saying I'm the greatest and capable of knowing all the differences, but I would say you need machines to know this difference. And even the machines say there's very little to no difference, other than the things potentially getting worse at 8000 Hz. So you're free to believe whatever you want. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. The important point is, I've had multiple sources confirm that 1000 Hz is good, and that there's very little benefit, if any at all, to 8000 Hz. And you'll more likely run into problems and drawbacks with 8000 Hz. So 1000 Hz is basically the sweet spot. Also, have you seen prices getting higher and higher? The more features you ask for on mice, even if you're not going to use them, the more the price goes up. So if we can just stick to 1000 Hz, maybe 2000 if you really care, and just focus on actual performance, I think we can get cheaper mice and also better quality while playing. As I said in the beginning, it's not about the numbers. I would much rather see companies make sure the DPI range is perfect up to 3200, rather than have 40,000 DPI. I'd rather see companies make sure 1000 Hz is very smooth and accurate, than have 8000 Hz. But most of all, I'd rather see companies make new shapes. Instead of just getting clones with new specs, I want new shapes to see if we can play better with them. As I keep saying, the right shape is going to help you play better than choosing a mouse with the latest sensor, or highest polling rate. They're just gimmicks. Shape is king. But that's my side of the debate. What are you thinking? Can you prove me wrong? 
Can you definitely tell the difference in a blind test? Let me know below. Use your links in the description if you want to help support what I do. Sub, like, and share, and I'll catch you in the next.